What kind of activities do you like to do to unblock creativity? Gosh, I mean, that's a great question. I certainly hope you dance as well as you dress. There's only one way to find out. Thank you so much for having me. I had a lot of fun with this film. And you know, something I really lo love about the movie is that we get to see Ellie uh, get to ex getting to experience something that she, she wrote, like a fantasy she created. So if you were able to live in a universe that you already play, like from a universe on a film or a TV show, which universe do you think it would be fun to experience maybe for one day? Oh, that, I mean, that, it's a loaded question for me because I am I get to experience it. Yeah. WWE. Oh wow. So that's that's one thing that I idolize as a, a child and was able to grow up and make my dream a reality and living that mm. the life of a, a WWE performer and superstar every day is a dream come true. So you, loaded question, you hit me right in the bullseye with that one. But uh, <laughs> man, that's a that's a special gift to be mm. able to live. Nice. I feel like I would probably I'd probably like to live in the world of Argyle, to be honest. Yeah, like, not a bad place. It's not a bad place. And I, I like their their goals is actually, I mean, you never really know what the true goal is, <laughs> but I like, by the time you get to the end of the journey, I like what their goal right has on. been. So see our guy. I don't play too many fun characters. They're kind of tragically complex. Spider-Man. Okay. You like to play in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that world is really bright and fun and you know just i i feel a lot of warmth for that you know kind of the marvel universe is is i think i, I think really a fun one thank you so much for having me I not, you're welcome. and the first thing i'm really curious to know about it's how you approach comedy in your films how do you measure especially the absurd when you think like, okay, maybe this is going to be too much or this is perfect. How do you uh, keep that that balance for your movie? What's your like parameters for the absurd in the films? Well, it depends who on your taste. <laughs> so I can guarantee there'll be some people who think we were too absurd and other people think we didn't go far enough. We do test the movies a lot, so I sit and we show it to audiences and I can tell, okay, we've got really have gone too far or uh, this is getting boring. So it's a, it's a balance, but I think with this movie, is this was a movie designed to be fun and to escape and to switch off and have a good time. So here we did dial it up in a few areas. <laughs> I went, mean, you know what, let's be brave. And so far, look, uh, some people will hate it, but a lot of people are liking it, so. I really liked it. I'm yeah. one of those persons. Good. And I'm really curious to know, like, what spy qualities, like being vigilante or sneaky, do you think would help you in your work as actors? If you could take something from the espionage world that worked for your work, what would you take from them, from, from the spy world? Spies need to be able to transform and become different kinds of human beings, which certainly, you know, lends itself to what we do. Yeah, but it's not what you created in Henry Cavill. Yeah, they talk about Henry, they go, what about the haircut? You know, that kind of flat toppy thing? And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what haircut you give him. He's gorgeous, right? It doesn't yeah. matter. Like, it's like, oh yeah, he has a funny hair. It doesn't matter. That doesn't answer your question. Yes. But it was just a thought I had. <laughs> it's a nice thought. Yeah, yes. that's right. I mean, that's that's the fun of it, is that there's this idea of what a spy is, which is like this James Bond kind of, you know, like perfect specimen, AKA Henry Cavill. And then Ellie encounters the real spy world, you know, Sam Rockwell, you. It's very different than, than what she imagined. For me, hands down, it would be like manipulating gadgets. It takes me a half hour to get my watch on every morning. <laughs> but spies are so smooth with all their gadgets. They have a yeah. pen with a gadget in it, and they don't even have to look, and they just yeah. operate everything, and they just talk to whoever is on the other end of the line. If I were to be a little bit more efficient in Manipulation of gadgetry. Wow, that would be good. that's real specific. Yeah. I don't know. I really don't have a good answer for that one. Right? I mean, I don't think I have a good answer for that one. Sometimes I feel like being a, being a good actor is like being a spy. Mm. You know, and vice versa. Mm. A spy is probably a great actor. Well played. So maybe I'm already a spy. Well played. So personally, for you, what makes you laugh? What kind of things make you laugh? Someone slipping on a banana skin. <laughs> you know, um, observational humor. 
Um, I love jokes based on the truth. You know, I, you know, I think the comedians that are that make you reflect on society and what's happening, I find very funny. Intelligent humor. I like I like humor that's not at the expense of a person. Yeah, I don't like that when someone I don't like someone being the butt of a joke. And you know, we see also Sofia Butella in this movie who previously worked with Matthew Bong as well. So I wanted to ask you if you were able, if you would have been able to be in a Matthew Bong film before, which film would you have liked to be in it? Oh, I, honestly any of them. I think any of them. Genuinely. I, I love just like the Kingsman working. franchise. I do. <laughs> he I does. do. Man, I do. I, I love his work and mm -hmm. I admire, admire what he does with every step of the way. Yeah. But uh, I, I love the Kingsman franchise. Is that the first movie you saw of Matthew Bond, Kingsman? No, Kick Ass was the first movie for me. And then, uh, man, Kingsman like affected my life. I love the <laughs> Kingsman franchise. That's so you, any X Men, everything. Yeah, all of them. I just, I like his vision. He always has great vision with every single thing that he takes on. I think that's really important, you know? It's like I've, I have worked with some directors who function differently, mm -hmm. but I like the way he functions and I like the way he inspires the performances out of people and I like, I like how he invests in every single department and every phase of movie making. And also I wanted to ask you, what do you think it's like the, one of the greatest lessons that you have learned as a director, something that you have learned through all of these years and that you always keep in mind now before starting any new project? Just, I mean, what have I learned? I mean, every every movie you learn something new. I think I've learned that when, however much you think you know, you know nothing. Wow. You know, it's the movies are a beast, and and they throw problems. Problems come from an area where you never expect them to come. Always prepare for the unexpected. Which would you say was the most unexpected thing about Argyle? For us, I, I think the hardest thing because we were shooting during lockdown, or well, just the end of lockdown, so we had masks and we weren't allowed to travel. And it was very, very hard. I didn't realize how important communication is. <laughs> Your in face sense, was. Yeah, fa yeah you, you know, you, get, you, you just, and I think because of Zooms and two years, people forgot how to be with each other. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you're wearing a mask and th there's like 2,000 people wearing masks and you can't remember, and you're like, wait, have I met you before? And we, t we did, and it, it, that was weird. So what I learned from making our girl is how important humanity is and being human and, discussing and when you when we speak it's not just our mouths and our ears it's our eyes it's it's it is it's everything communicates and uh, we get to experience Ellie having like a writer's block. So I'm really curious to know what kind of activities do you like to do to unblock creativity for you, especially when you're trying to create new characters as these ones? Gosh, I mean, that's a great question. I My mom is a novelist. I grew up in an environment kind of seeing what it took to be a novelist. The unblocking and all of that, I think it's, it, it's, it's just the, um, at least for my my mom, and then I've kind of been, you know learned this by her. It's about just always doing mm. it, and it's okay if it's bad. Like try to write the worst sentence that you've ever written. Okay, fine, great, and then carry on. And um, and with that consistency, eventually you can end some space from those things. You look back and you're like, ah, that wasn't so bad. That was okay. We can piece this together. So it's like for me, it's it's like you know just just keep moving. Mine's to keep moving, but it's to go for a run. Ah. Uh, to, to sweat and to allow your body and your mind to escape. And then a steam room. Um, oh! Yeah. That makes sense. yeah. Take a big thing of water in there, just, <laughs> and, and you get so hot and you're sweating, it just kind of lifts any problems away from you from a, a, an advantage point that you can now see it. And I often come up with solutions in the steam room. Yeah. Wow, gives you perspective. Yeah. yeah. I do, I go to, I take a shower. Oh. It's very similar, mm -hmm. very, very similar as well. And need it in life. Well, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> every once in a while, it's, you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to just do the same thing again. So I'm always with action saying, how do we do it differently? How do we, the audience, if they've bought a ticket, deserve to see something new in my mind. So just try to do it differently. We have to respect the story. So it can't be just different for being different, but it has to it has to tell you the story, but it should be something novel. Right. So that's what we try to do. What blew your mind from the behind the scenes, from the set of Argyle? I think certainly the scope of everything. Anytime you get onto uh, an idea that is so big, uh, it takes resource. Mm -hmm. And to see resource at work is special. To be on the set of a Matthew Vaughn film where it's, mm -hmm. uh, 
an incredibly big idea. You get a, an idea of how big it is when you're on set, and then when you see it, it crushes the perception. Like you get on set and you're like, man, they're doing some crazy stuff here. And then you see Argyle and it's like, whoa, it's another yeah. world. So it's just, he works in levels, but each level isn't any less valuable. Every level of the movie and the experience gets better and more refined. So by the time it gets to you, the consumer, it's a wonderful experience. So we were blown away on set. Yeah. But when you see the final product, different world. Wow, that's nice. I, it's true. Like, uh, yeah, what he said. <laughs> retweet. Blown away. Retweet. Retweet. Retweet, retweet. retweet. retweet to that <laughs> comment. Being comment. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed the movie and congratulations on, on your you role. So Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. Thank you so it's much. It's time for you to meet the real Agent Argyle. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god.